Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk through a full editing workflow of a scenario hopefully everybody can relate to because of course we all start at the same point, we buy our brand new camera, we quickly flick through the manual to make sure we know how it works and then we immediately head out to our local eruption where we photograph 10,000 degree magma spewing from a volcanic crater. Now aside from dealing with the extreme heat and perhaps exposure to gases, maybe you're wearing a gas mask whilst you're shooting. It is actually a very difficult shooting scenario because there's a lot of danger, a lot of motion and a lot of contrast. So actually exposure bracketing doesn't work so well in that scenario. So I do have an exposure bracket here that we're going to edit and I'm going to talk you through that very common editing workflow. So let's get started. So as you may have guessed, I didn't take these photos myself and nor did a beginner shoot them. This is not a beginner shooting scenario and of course, I doubt any of you have ever photographed an eruption before, but if you have, lucky you. Uh, but this is an interesting uh, scenario for us to uh, go through the editing process of because it is so contrasty, so complex, so we can learn things from editing these images, which is why I asked my friend uh, Stefan Forster, who's a professional Swiss photographer, uh, to send me these raw files. He was out in Iceland for the ongoing eruption out there, and he's produced a spectacular aerial video, which I'll link in the comments below. So please do check this out and check out his portfolio as well, because he's been to some incredible places and he's a really excellent photographer. Uh, so. We're indebted to him for uh, providing these images for the, the purposes of this uh, this video tutorial here. So let's have a look through his exposures and um, talk about uh, some of the, the issues that we've got here. The first one is fairly obvious. There's an enormous amount of contrast. So we might want the shadow information from this brightest exposure, uh, but the highlight information from a darker exposure. And one thing that we could start by doing is just selecting all four images here and right clicking and selecting photo merge and HDR like we usually do because this is an exposure bracket. And if I turn the deghosting off here, you can see why we wouldn't do that. And that's, it tries to find the best of the exposures in terms of detail and it creates these weird artifacted areas here. And so you then need to turn on the ghosting correction because those are referred to as ghosts to solve that problem. And in fact, we probably need a medium or high setting to actually fix that in this case. But then the computer is choosing what it thinks is the best exposure based purely on detail. But of course, we want to pick the best exposure based on what's going to look best. And we can't do that here. Uh, so we're going to close that down and we're going to try an entirely different approach. So let's start by looking at these images. If I press the I key, I can bring up the information of the files. And all of them are shot at F13 and ISO 64. But as we go through them, you'll see the shutter speed change from 20 seconds to 5 seconds to 1.6 seconds to 0.8 of a second, which captures all of the highlight detail in that sort of cauldron there. So Stefan has, has shot this technically correctly in capturing all of the, uh, the detail from the shadows to the highlights. But there is a problem here because the motion is very, very different across the exposures. So in this 20 second exposure, the rendering of the lava is very different to the five second exposure. And that in turn is very different to the 1.6 second exposure and so on. And there's actually an interesting learning point here because it seems pretty clear to me from looking at this that it takes about five seconds, three to five seconds for a bit of lava to leave the cauldron here, go over its arc and then touch down on the side here because we see all of these continuous light trails where the, the lava has passed through the air. And that's important because if you understand the t that time period, you know that if you extend the exposure, these individual light trails aren't actually going to get any brighter, but the background will get brighter because there's twilight that is light in the background. So if we look at the, uh, the brighter exposure here, you can see actually less definition between these light trails and the background because the brightness of the background has built up as has the, the haze, if you like, from the glow of the lava. That's also built up over time. But the actual trails themselves were of a fixed brightness because they only were 
were, if you like, lit up for three seconds. That's the time it took the lava to take that path. So that's a useful thing to understand. Um, there's not many scenarios where it would apply, but it certainly applies to, for example, photographing lightning, because the only way you can make lightning brighter is to open up your aperture or increase your ISO. And similarly here, if you wanted to make these light trails more defined, you would need to keep this uh, shutter speed as short as you could. And the only way you could make them brighter would be to just brighten the whole image. So uh, open up the aperture or, or brighten the eye or, or set a higher ISO. So it's actually this image that we're going to try and work on because I think the definition is much better here. And incidentally, there are some photographers who would take the best bits from different areas of the image. So you might take this section from the brightest exposure and this nice little detail from this darker exposure and combine them all to create some sort of super perfect world explosion scenario. I really don't like that kind of stuff because I like photography to express a single moment or at least short period of time as in the case here we're photographing for five seconds. Uh, so I wouldn't do that but you can do that if you want to. Uh, but it's this photo we're going to edit so let's see if we've actually got everything that we need in this one exposure. So let's boost the exposure five stops and just see what it looks like. So we still have pretty low noise levels even if we go to that extreme and of course we're never going to brighten it to this extreme. So basically we don't need to worry about the shadow detail. We have loads and loads of information. This is shot on a Nikon Z72 modern camera, amazing dynamic range. So we've got plenty of shadow information. What about the highlights? Well, the highlights look a lot less good. So you see this blocking of yellow here uh, where we've clipped the red and green channels together and it's uh, yeah created this solid yellow color that is way oversaturated and I don't know, it looks absolutely horrendous as as do all of the transitions between these colours. But actually we'd have to question whether we ever wanted to do anything like this because if we look at um, the image and actually let's uh, boost the shadows so we can see what's going on a little bit better. One of the beautiful characteristics of the lava here is this glow around the edge so it really shows just how hot the lava is. I mean in any of these exposures we know that we're looking at lava so of course we know from context that the subject is very hot but I think this glow adds to that idea and it's something that I want to include uh, in, in the image and in order to do that I think we need the lava to basically look white hot although perhaps not quite this bright. So if I talk about how I actually want the lava to render I probably want it to look something like this. So in the brightest areas it is pure white um, but some of the highlights are just slightly recovered so that we see this very bright yellow here. I think that's pretty much ideal rendering uh, and, and that's what I'll be going for and actually this exposure is pretty good in that respect. We, we do get some of that detail brought back into the highlights so I think that looks quite nice. Uh, but one area that isn't quite perfect is I'd love to have a bit more texture in these in these lines in this plume. So that's one local area uh, from this exposure that we are going to bring in because the highlights have not been clipped in this exposure, whereas they have in the exposure we're going to predominantly edit. So let's go on and edit. So press the D key to develop. And I'm going to boost the shadows to 100%. And I'm going to darken the highlights a little bit because I know that I want to bring uh, the highlights and shadows together because that's going to allow me to brighten the exposure generally because I want to see a bit more into that background. And from a tonal perspective, this now looks about right because I can see into the shadows, I can see the hills in the background and I can start to see some of the details in this lava here. But there is a very, very strong colour cast. So this was obviously shot on auto white balance. And as a result, the white balance is far too warm because the camera is confusingly actually fighting against the blue of the sky, which was the dominant colour. So we're going to cool the white balance right back down to 5,500 Kelvin and do watch my white balance video if you haven't already. And we're going to set the tint to plus five or something like that. And this now uh, looks a lot more natural from a white balance perspective. And I'm just going to get rid of that dust spot there too so we can click our dust spotting tool and there it goes. 
So I think we're almost at a point where we can bring this into Photoshop. One thing I am going to do is just brighten the foreground locally a little bit more using a gradient. So just dragging that across the uh, foreground there and just brightening it up very slightly. I'm not going to go crazy with this because we do have plenty of information here. And actually, I don't want to over brighten this uh, section of the volcano. So I think that's a good place now to take it into Photoshop. So let's do that. Edit it into Photoshop and it's going to open it up. And there it is. So I've actually had a quick play with this file already. So let's close down some of these um, just so that we're on the same page and I'm going to start by creating a curves adjustment for the foreground. So let's uh, just push up the brightness of that foreground a little bit more and I'll explain why I didn't do more in uh, in Lightroom um, when I do the masking because of course this time it's a lot easier to manipulate the mask. We're going to drag a gradient across the foreground so there's that brightening adjustment again but this time I'm going to mask out this plume, this glowing plume because I don't want to over brighten that area. So I'm going to select my paintbrush and select black and I'm going through masking here and curves very quickly, but uh, if you want to understand them in more depth, just watch my videos on the curves tool. There's three videos. Um, the first one tackles luminosity. The second one talks about masks and the local application of the curves tool. And the third one talks about the color adjustments. Um, so let's just set this to 100% actually in a big soft brush. So we're painting on the mask here and I'm painting black to make sure that that adjustment is not applied to the area around the volcano there. In fact, let's make sure it isn't applied at all. Now there is still a very strong red cast around the volcano, which is quite natural. It comes from the, vol the volcano physically glowing and lighting up the sort of heat, haze and steam and so on that's coming off the lava. But nevertheless, it stops us seeing into some of the detail here. So I'm going to create a color curve adjustment to the red curve. I'm going to set an incredibly harsh red point here, but I'm only going to apply it at a very low opacity. So I'm going to invert the mask here so that the change isn't applied at all to anywhere in the image. And then I'm going to slowly paint it in white at a low opacity. So I've just, um, I'm just going to set the brush to 10% and we're going to gradually paint in this adjustment here uh, in white. So let's uh, gradually do that. And I'm just eyeing this up as I go to see if it looks good. And if you use a big soft brush, it's more likely to look good. In fact, I think our sky here is still a little bit too red. So let's paint away some of that in the sky even. Uh, and the foreground, certainly that looks very red indeed. Let's do that. And it's this central area that is the reddest of all. So let's uh, use a slightly smaller brush there. And I'm just trying to color match by eye. So it does take um, a keen eye to do this. That develops over time. It's not some sort of innate ability that I have. It's just that I've edited a lot of photos. So I can see the, the, the red where it comes in. Of course, I can't actually spend too long uh, doing this because the video will become too long. For example, here I've gone too far and I'd have to go back and paint the red back in and then select a larger brush and paint it out and so on and so forth. But I can't afford to be quite that perfectionist or this video will end up half an hour long. Now there is an area here that is strangely purple so I'm going to deal with that locally as well. I'm going to create a new curves adjustment and I'm going to remove red and I'm also going to remove blue and again I'm going to invert that mask and paint in white again. Uh, so just changing that brush size. So it's a bit more local and again, gradually building it and just eyeing it up as I go because I want to target the areas which are most purple the most, which is why I'm painting this um, with a slightly smaller brush. So that's the before and after on that purple area. You can see just how much that's improved that section. In fact, let's take a little bit out of the uh, lava flow there as well. 
and that's the red adjustment so that's an absolutely enormous adjustment but a really good one in terms of seeing into the details around the volcano i think we might actually have gone a little bit too far because maybe we want some of that red left in there that sort of natural glow so let's not be too heavy-handed there so that's the before and that's the after and now that we've fixed some of those color issues i think what we can do is come in and locally improve the contrast in some of these darker areas let's start with this foreground area so a new curves adjustment and i'm going to push up the brightness here and just keep the blacks black and let's change this to luminosity because i don't want too much color to come in so that looks uh, that looks pretty good in that foreground section there so there's the gradient dragged over and let's just paint away this top portion of the gradient so that's not affecting uh, that that area that's the before and that's the after so now we can see that amazing structure in the uh, in the lava maybe we just need to make the shadows a little bit darker still a bit more contrast in there like that so there we go before and after um, and then we're going to continue with the rest of the image so let's do a slightly different uh, technique so this time we're going to use the finger tool and we're going to try and improve the structure here so let's zoom in so we can see what we're doing I'm going to place one point by clicking here and another by clicking here. So it's this section of the curve that needs to be steeper to add contrast. So let's do that. We'll drag that one down and push the other one up. And as we do that, you see we add an enormous amount of saturation because we're adding contrast as well. Uh, so we can try changing that to luminosity mode. But if we do that, it becomes too desaturated. So I mentioned this in the curves video, but sometimes I will split this adjustment so that half of it is luminosity and half of it is normal mode. Um, so it usually actually works better if you make the normal mode the, the layer below. So let's make each of those 50%. Uh, wrong, wrong thing there. 50%. There we go. And then I'm going to put these two layers into a layer group so that I can mask them together. So that's both of those curves adjustment, each at 50%, but one of them is luminosity blend mode and the other is normal blend mode. And then press Alt as I click the mask and that creates a black mask. So now I'm back at that stage where I can paint in the adjustments. So I'm effectively dodging this local area and I paint in with white at a low opacity. So let's uh, select a 30% opacity. And you can see as I paint that in there, all that lovely detail is revealed in the lava flow. And actually painting it close to the lava works particularly well because it looks like that glow is coming off the lava, which we know already is a, is a natural effect. So we're kind of enhancing that natural effect, but not, uh, not in a crazy way. So we can just build this until it looks about right. We don't need to do it to 100%, but uh, I think that's looking pretty good now. And we can even try this on some other areas. So let's see how it looks on this, uh, this lava bridge here. Yeah, so that actually looks pretty awesome. Yeah, and all this sort of ember areas there. Let's try it on this lava plume as well. And of course we could create new adjustments to do this, but actually if this adjustment works for this area as well, then why not use it? Why create a, a new curves adjustment if we don't need to? Uh, and we can also try it for this area. So let's do a larger brush. And it even, it even works there too. And you can see actually we're painting some of that haze, that hazy red color back in, but I think that's okay. Uh, so that's the before and that's the after and you can see just how much texture we've now brought into to the scene. So if I turn all these adjustments off and back on then you can see uh, it's really looking quite good now. Now there's a, a couple of particular issues that we need to deal with. Um, one is this weird color fringe. Uh, I don't know if you can see that but there's this strange transition between sort of gray and uh, purple on this edge here. There's lots of ways you could deal with that, but quite honestly, because there's no real detail in this particular case, I think I'd fix this by cloning. So what I would do is select the clone tool and uh, have a fairly large soft brush like this set to, yeah, 30% is fine. And then I basically alt click just above the line and then paint in just below it at this low opacity. And you can see it just softens that line um, and that makes it less visible and that means we're not gonna notice it. And that's all I really want to achieve, um, to be perfectly honest. It kind of gets rid of that artifact and, 
and then once it's not noticeable I'm not really bothered about it past that point. The other way um, is to use different color profiles in your raw converter but in this particular case that didn't work for me so that's why I've gone in and tried to fix it manually. And actually being particular I would go in um, again and uh, build this a, a little bit better because you can see it actually becomes brighter and then darker again so what you do is select here at say one percent um, or ten percent and gradually sort of paint back and forth until you get a really nice gradual transition you can also go in and modify the channels individually but needless to say these things are solvable but they're time consuming to solve so i won't show any more in this uh, in this video the very last thing I'm going to do is try and bring the detail back into this lava flow area just here. So I'm going to go back into Lightroom and uh, select that darker exposure there. But one thing I want to do is make this, uh, ooh, I don't know what's happening there, um, make this lava as bright as I can. So I kind of want that white glowing edge. I want it to look close to that brighter exposure. Uh, but whilst retaining some of that detail there. So I'm actually going to boost the exposure because I don't want it to be as dark as it is because here this detail is so much better defined than it is in the other exposure. Uh, but it's going to blend a lot better if I can keep it bright like this. So I'm also going to lift the shadows because that's also going to make the blend easier to achieve. And finally, I'm going to increase the saturation because I know the only bit that I want to uh, look actually use from this exposure is this this lava flow here and if I keep it saturated and use this at a low opacity it's actually going to look more natural so I'm going to uh, edit this in Photoshop now and then select it all control a control c and then paste it on top of our base layer there so there it is perfectly aligned because uh, Stefan was shooting on a tripod and it's this area that we, we want to paste in, if you like. So I'm actually going to select this area using the Select Color tool because it's a quick way of making uh, selections. So select color range. And I will do a video on selections in future. But it's surprising how often you can solve these problems with the color range tool. So I'm going to use it here. I'm keeping the fuzziness low to try and get a fairly accurate selection. And if I click OK, it loads the uh, the selection here and we see these marching ants so that when I create a new layer mask it will automatically load that selection so if I hold down alt you can see there is the area that we've selected and whilst I've got the mask here I can actually clean up the selection a little bit because of course we do want some of these areas uh, to be used to their full extent so let's make this brush a bit smaller and we're going to just manually paint in white 100% just to make sure that this uh, this local area is handled pretty well. And it doesn't matter too much if I slightly go outside of the, the edge. Um, and I am, again, going to do this just fairly quickly because I don't want to waste your precious time nor create a video that looks uh, oppressively long because I know that if I make these videos over about half an hour, people only watch 10 minutes of them. So, <laughs> um, right, that, that will do. And uh, there we have our, our lava painted in. So you can see there's much, much more detail in that darker exposure than in the brighter one. And we're actually going to turn down the opacity of this adjustment a little bit because we don't need it to its a full extent. It is just a subtle addition of detail that we want. And then I'm just going to make sure that we're not actually uh, painting in any horrible edge artifacts. So I'm going to click on the mask again, switch to black and 50% and I'm going to just loosely paint around this edge uh, just so that we don't get any of that horrible edge detail coming in. And I think that will do for this image. So we've obviously done quite a lot to it in a number of different ways. Uh, we could actually do more contrast work on the, the detail in the, in the volcano if you really wanted to. Um, that might be a nice change to make. Um, <laughs> one thing I haven't done, by the way, is mask the mask. So do you see we've just introduced this artifact just here? That looks absolutely terrible. That's because the mask is uh, it's including that whole area. So what I meant to do was put this layer here into a new folder because that then allows me to apply a mask to that folder. And now that adjustment, that new layer that we added in, 
actually isn't applied anywhere at all. So I can turn this on and off and you see it makes no change. So now I can actually paint that in on the mask, much like we did with our adjustments. So if I paint white in there, this time 100%, and uh, we can just paint it in. So there's that detail coming back again. So now we've got rid of that uh, that artifact. So that was a part of the process that I missed there. But hopefully you found that interesting. Um, obviously lots of local work really thinking about what needs to be done to the image and, uh, and taking my time to explain it to. This kind of edit usually takes me about 10 minutes if I'm doing it for myself. So there's our finished point and there's the before and the after and actually if we uh, if we save this let's save it and here it is loaded into Lightroom so if we select that raw file that we used and uh, just reset it then I can uh, compare the before and after to its uh, its full extent so let's select both of those and press the C key to compare and you can see uh, really quite a significant difference in terms of how we've managed that contrast within the scene and worked on local areas in specific ways. So hopefully you found that helpful, uh, as, as complex as it may have been if you're, if you're not familiar with all of these tools. Thank you very much, uh, Stefan, for, for letting me use those raw files. That was really interesting. And uh, if you want to see more of this content in future, uh, please do subscribe to this channel and give this video a like and comment away so that more people can uh, see what I'm doing.